Hello and welcome to Basic Medical Sciences. If this is your first time, please make sure you subscribe so that you won't miss any of our latest videos. In this video, we are going to talk about Neisseria gonorrhea, which is a causative agent for gonorrhea, right? So this disease, uh, it only infects humans, humans only. Uh, there is no immunity to repeated infections, right? So I will explain this concept later. I will explain the reason why we are prone to repeated infections, right? So uh, on transmission, is transmitted sexually uh, and is also transmitted through an infected birth canal. Right, so let's talk about uh, morphology and metabolism of this bacteria. Right, so Neisseria gonorrhea uh, and also Neisseria meningitidis, you need to remember that, if a bean shaped or kidney shaped with concave sides facing each other, forming an appearance of a donut, right? So this whole sentence is uh, buzz away, it's like in exam, sometimes they say bean shaped or kidney shaped or, or donut, right? So if you look here, you can see uh, the, a donut shape, right? Uh, again, it's a gram negative type lococci, it's a facultative anaerobe, and it's it thrives well in high carbon dioxide environment. Uh, it ferments only glucose, right? This is important. Only glucose, not maltose. If you still remember in the previous video in Neisseria meningitidis, we've seen that uh, Neisseria meningitidis, it ferments glucose and maltose. That's why in the word meningitidis, you find G and M. But in Neisseria gonorrhea, you only find G, right? So it only ferments glucose, right? So it's another way to differentiate those two species. Right, so let's talk about the virulent factors, right? So this is very important. Number one is pili, right? Pili is the most important one because it has a lot of function. The first function is for adherence to epithelial cells. The second function is antigenic variation, right? So that's why uh, there is no immunity to repeated infection because uh, there is some kind of a recombination. So if you are infected by uh, a, set, a certain strain, right, and then you are treated, if you expose yourself to this bacteria again, you can uh, be infected, right, because of this antigenic variation, uh, another function of the pili is antiphagocytic because the the pili helps uh, uh, binding of bacteria tightly to the host cells, protecting it from phagocytosis. Right again uh, on phagocytosis, I just want to remind you uh, about Neisseria meningitidis. Neisseria meningitidis uh, has an antiphagocytic uh, uh, capsule. It is a capsule, a polysaccharide capsule, but Neisseria gonorrhea doesn't have the capsule. I just want you to remember that. All right. Uh, it also contains an IgA protease for cleaving the IgA uh, immunoglobulin. Right. So this is for mucosal immunity. Right. Another virulent factor is outer membrane protein porins. Right. There is porin A and porin B. Uh, and these two appear to promote invasion of, uh, I mean, invasion of the, this bacteria into the epithelial cells. Uh, we also have OPA proteins, right? OPA proteins promote adherence and invasion to the epithelial cells. Uh, and these are also named as their expression result in OPA colonies, OPA colonies, right, for OPA proteins. All right. Uh, Another virulent factor, you know, this uh, this bacteria, same as Neisseria meningitidis, it has uh, unique proteins that uh, that can extract ion from transferrin, lactoferrin, uh, hemoglobin, right? So all these proteins have ion, right? So this bacteria has proteins which can take ion from these proteins. Right, let's talk about the toxins, right? So... Uh, the first one is an endotoxin, like in other gram-negative uh, bacteria. You will see that uh, there is a lipopolysaccharide on the envelope, right? So 
here is uh, like the differentiation between the cell of gram negative and gram positive right so uh, the here is a is the gram negative one right so you can see the uh, lipopolysaccharide here this light green is lipopolysaccharide right so uh, the other thing uh, it does not produce exotoxin right no exotoxin only endotoxin now let's talk about the clinical features right so gonorrhea uh, like we can classify it into three groups gonorrhea in men gonorrhea in females and gonorrhea in neonates right uh, in in both cases gonorrhea can be asymptomatic but the patient will be infectious right uh, in men uh, it mainly cause uh, inflammation of the urethra that's urethritis in women it causes uh, cervical gonorrhea which can progress to the pelvic uh, forming causing pelvic inflammatory disease or PID right so this PID has a lot of complications the first one is sterility right so sterility is caused by uh, scaring of the fallopian tubes which occludes the lumen, right? The lumen of the fallopian tube, of course, right? The second complication is ectopic pregnancy, right? This is uh, due to uh, resistance to normal egg transit down the tube. Again, it's because of scarring, right? Another complication is formation of abscesses, right? Be it in the fallopian tubes, ovaries, or peritoneum. Peritonitis, inflammation of peritoneum. Bacteria may spread from the ovaries and the fallopian tubes to infect the peritoneal fluid. Right. A uh, next condition is perihepatitis. It's called Fitzhugh-Curtis syndrome. Fitzhugh-Curtis syndrome. Right. So it looks like this. Uh, okay. So I told you it's a complication of what PID. Uh, is perihepatitis there is inflammation of hepatic capsule and diaphragm right because you know the the liver is surrounded by a glisson capsule right so uh like the there will be a, the kind of adhesion between the diaphragm and the liver right so they form like violin violin strings right uh another symptom of this condition is pleuritic chest pain uh, the patient may or may not have signs or symptoms of pelvic inflammatory disease, right? So I have another image here. You can see the diaphragm and the liver and you see the uh, violin string sign, right? So that was gonorrhea, both uh, like gonorrhea in men and gonorrhea in uh, women, right? Now, in both men and women, there is gonococcal bacteremia right gonococcal bacteremia uh the patients may have uh septic arthritis septic arthritis because gonococcal arthritis is the most common cause of septic arthritis in sexually active individuals right okay so here uh there is a knee right so if you take the synovial fluid from the joint and examine it you will see uh, the neutrophils uh, I mean like the bacteria inside the neutrophils or other white blood cells right uh, here you can see this patient with arthritis right if you look at these joints you'll see uh, inflammation of the joints of course right uh, now now the last one is uh, gonorrhea in neonates right so in neonates uh, there is ophthalmia neonatorum conjunctivitis, right? So you can see here, there is uh, inflammation of the conjunctiva to the, the extent that the baby cannot even open the eye, right? So Neisseria gonorrhea is, uh, in this case, is acquired during passage through an infected birth canal, right? So conjunctivitis, in this case, uh, is uh, it usually erupts within the first five days. Why am I telling you this? You need to remember that 
uh, neonatal conjunctivitis is mainly caused by chlamydia and uh, Neisseria gonorrhea, right? So chlamydia is more common and presents later due to a longer incubation period uh, presenting five to two weeks post birth. But in contrast, gonococcal conjunctivitis presents early, often within 24 hours of delivery, uh, until up to five days post birth. Right. So within five days, you need to remember if it is after, um, I mean, after five days, like from seven days, ten days going forward, then you need to suspect chlamydia. But there are other uh, ways of differentiating these two. Right, we will talk about chlamydia later. Right, let's talk about diagnosis of gonorrhea. Right, gram staining, that's number one. Gram staining of urethral pus re reveals the tiny gram negative donut shaped diplococci with, within the white blood cells. Right, that's the first one. The second method is through culture. Right, so uh, we 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 can like uh, take the uh the specimen and put it in a special agar chocolate agar right and there is another media it's a selective media right so this one will prevent growth of other bacteria right this kind of so selective media is known as theamatin right theamatin agar or vpn right right uh vpn or v V, C, N is something I will tell you, right? So V for vancomycin, C for cholestin. If there is P, it's also known as is polystatin, right? And nystatin, right? So vancomycin will kill the gram-positive bacteria. Cholestatin will kill the gram-negative bacteria, except the uh, Neisseria species. And then... Nystatin will kill the fungi in the culture, right? So, uh, the cell will contains cytochrome oxidase, which oxidizes the dye tetramethylphenylene diamine from colorless to deep pink, right? So, this is used in, um, if you want to ID the colonies, we can also use polymerase chain reaction, the PCR of bacteria DNA in clinical specimens. Right. To conclude this video, let's talk about a treatment. All right. So the first line of choice is ceftriaxone, like 250 milligrams intramuscular, and azithromycin, one gram orally, times one. Right. So it's the first line of uh, choice. The second line, uh, we can use cefixim plus azithromycin or doxycycline, right? So this is for uh, gonorrhea, be it in like in men and in women, right? Or both, right? But for neonatal conjunctivitis, that's for ophthalmia neonatorum. Firstly, there is erythromycin, right? Erythromycin eye drops should be given immediately following birth for prophylaxis against both Neisseria gonorrhea and chlamydia trachomatis conjunctivitis, right? So erythromycin is for both. Infants with ophthalmia neonatorum require systemic treatment with ceftriaxone, right? And erythromycin syrup should also be provided to cover the possible uh, concurrent chlamydia, right? Because this, okay, chlamydia or disease is not a, uh, an exclamation mark, but it's an L, right? Concurrent chlamydia or disease, right? Thank you so much. If you like this video, please make sure you subscribe so that you won't miss any of our latest videos.